Let's see what joyous fun we can get into using eight mods and building a small towns all over this beautiful map. Today, let's take our village and turn it into a town. First thing we're gonna do today is add a bypass to this train station. This was suggested by the witch doctor and I think it's so smart, being that we don't have separate lines for cargo and commuter lines, this will be a great way to help avoid train traffic problems in the future. It's really important to me as we move forward through this series for me to take all of your thoughts and comments and suggestions. And David actually made a really good point. At a 4,000 population, technically this is still a village. My goal today is to double the population so we can actually call this a town. So good call, David. The thing I want to focus on first is bring in two other points of connectivity. Right now we just have one road into this area and that's gonna cause traffic problems. So I'm gonna bring a little in industrial bridge to start and I think we'll do a tunnel about halfway through the village here. Now if you're like me and you're not using a lot of mods you can just do this slowly and use your page up button as you go up and down um, and then I am using move it so you can just select the node and slightly inch that up till you get kind of a more smooth ramp. This does take a lot longer. There are sloping tools and things like that, but I keep things real basic around here, guys. Okay, we need a third connection, and I think going right in the middle, we're gonna dezone one of these blocks. We'll turn it into a little park area, but that's where we're gonna have a tunnel that goes right underneath the railroad tracks into the new area of our town. Now, when you are making a tunnel, again, you just use that page down, pull it across when you're ready to come up, use that page up. This is why extra landscaping tools is one of my must have mods because if I was in vanilla, I would have to delete all these trees and I like to start with a clean slate. You can just select your brush size and then left click to clear your trees. Just like I did with the other side, I just kind of wanted to make this road layout a little bit more unique and um, even though we did a little bit more grid over here, just bringing that curved road tool really helps. Again, I'm gonna have the industrial area by the waterfront um, just to kind of follow what we have going on the other side that we did on the first one. And then I'm gonna go through like I did before and kind of choose which roads I want. And I like to do this ahead of time. It lets me clearly and easily plan out my bike routes, which are really important to me. Place down some nice tree-lined streets where I want to zone my residential and then just bring in some regular roads as well. Now, this is where the bike path is going to end and I think sneaking a little bike tunnel or pedestrian path underneath here is actually gonna be really beneficial for keeping, encouraging the walking and biking that we already have going in our town. And again, same with the road, you just use your page down and you can bring a pedestrian bike path or a bike path underground and create a nice little tunnel. Now tunnels aren't very safe. I'm not a fan of them myself, but in some areas it's pretty handy, especially if you're not using a lot of mods, it can be a little bit easier than doing a bridge. So I'm just gonna place back in our trees and then we will move on to complete our road network of the new area of our town. I also want to encourage um, pedestrian and bike movement through this tunnel because I think that's just going to help. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this bike road all the way through to the other side and then we can hook up to a bike road on the other side of our town. Sayo Ayers in the comments, and I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce your um, name correctly, reminded me that you can, which I think I did this a long time ago, but I completely forgot that you can just hold down your mouse and 
change out all your trees like this instead of clicking on each individual road. Um, I think I remember someone doing that when we first got the ability to change out the trees on our road, but I completely forgot about it. So thank you for the tip that made that so much faster. Now we have our one circular, but now that we're expanding the town size, I'm going to do two bus lines, one in each direction. And I think I'm gonna delete this line, start over fresh and really be thoughtful of where I'm placing um, all of the bus lines to make sure that we're hitting everyone. So everyone's just a block or two walk from a bus stop. So I think going with more bus stops than I would normally is a good call because then we're really serving the community well, especially those who aren't as mobile. Okay, we've got our first bus line down and We'll just do New Brighton 01. We'll keep this really simple. If you guys have some unique names for the bus lines, let me know. And let's just go with a nice green. Let's take a look here. What bus we wanna do? I mean, I guess we could just go with a 30 capacity to start with and just kind of see if we need to move up from there. We're going to have frequent stops, so Let's see how that goes and eight buses. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Okay, so now let's go in and put the lines in the opposite direction. So just going around and meeting up on the opposite, opposite side of the road from where I put down the first line. And this makes it really easy no matter which where you're trying to get to, you know you can go to the bus stop and get either direction bus. Um, so I think that's really helpful for moving people around. So big shocker, this will be a new Brighton 2. And we'll do the same thing, just leave it on the 30 um, quantity capacity and let's do eight buses. And we'll just let that run and see how it goes as we develop this side of our town. Okay, we need to put in some water pipes. Okay, I think we're ready to get a zoning. I love that we are seeing the buses move around. We're already seeing lots of people using our bike road. This is really satisfying. I think this is gonna work out really well. And I absolutely love our our little tunnel right in the center of town too. So I put this in as a bike path, but I think this could service both bike and pedestrian. So I think I'm gonna upgrade this to just a regular pedestrian road. And then we'll have to do a little work on this side to get this connected up so that the pedestrians can reach this on top of those that are riding their bikes. Now I made the mistake of not marking some of these buildings along this road here as historical and they've just gotten too tall. I really want a nice layer up in height as we approach the university. So I think I'm going to unfortunately delete these and put back in using find it some of my favorite little apartment buildings just to control those layers of height and then i think also in front of the university we could bring in a little high density as well now if you're new to using find it you can see you can select the size of building you want how you know if you're looking for whatever depth or width that you are looking for. It really just helps narrow it down and then you can pick the style that you want. And then you just place it on top of your zoning, hit play, it will fill in as long as you have the right district over top of it if it's specific to a district. Um, and that's a great way to use Find It to really hand pick the buildings that you want. I don't do that 
too often unless I'm looking for a specific look. I do like to play whack-a-mole. It's just one of those vanilla mechanics I actually enjoy. But I think sometimes for things like this, it's also really handy to use the Find It mod in that way. So right here in front of the university, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna grab those apartment buildings that I like and just have a little bit of height. And then I think we'll put a nice line of trees in between these um, high density apartment buildings and our low density housing. I'm also going to delete these two buildings. They're just a smidge too tall for me for what I'm looking for in this area. Then I'm going to go through and mark all of these historicals so that we don't run into this problem further down the road. I hope you guys like that change. This feels much better to me height wise. All right, this is all filled in so nicely, so I think we can continue on and add some more zoning in. This is coming together so nicely. I want to check and see how our buses are doing now that they've been running for a while. I just want to make sure we're, that everyone is getting picked up. We're getting great usage. This is awesome. And everyone's getting picked up. That makes me so happy. The other thing I really want to do when building out these towns is, you know, we're going to lean into each DLC as we approach a town. This town is a non-specific DLC town, kind of like our starter town. But for a lot of small starter towns, a lot of us love to use the tax office as like the town center or the town hall. And I wanted to bring that into this build and I love putting it at the end of this block here. Just kind of when you're coming up from the tunnel, just to see that I think would be very cool. The other asset I wanted to use here was the friendly neighborhood park. I also, that gives me that kind of small town vibe. I love that. And the other thing I'm going to bring in is the hypermarket because I think having a large grocery store is just going to service this area so well. Now, like I said, my goal was to try to double the population of this town. So I think we're ready to extend our road network through this area. And I think reaching down to the waterfront would make a lot of sense. So I'm just going to build this out again, add in some more zoning and see where we end up. Okay, that was a lot, but I'm so happy with this little extension to our town. I do want to bring it all the way to the water today, but just taking my time and going section by section is good. And I'm loving seeing the traffic moving around. There's no real backups because we've got these three connection points. I think everything's flowing really nicely. I am so happy with how this is coming together. it's time to do a little detailing here. I want to take this little area of land we dezoned and just kind of make it a little park area. So we'll bring in a gazebo and a restroom and just some trees and this will just be a green space um, the neighbors can use. I 
I think also bringing those live oaks here, there would be a bit of traffic and we do have the homes right here. So I think creating a little bit of a tree noise barrier, the uh, residents would love that. Now around our tax office, just again, some very simple detailing, not getting into anything too crazy. I like to bring little paths where I can to the back of buildings like this. I think it just adds something a little more to the build. Simple little detailing, things like that can go a long way. Now on the opposite, of the opposite side of the track, last week we did this really awesome bike and pedestrian um, network all along the city and you can see it's getting highly utilized people are going from point A to point B along this side of town I'm not gonna duplicate that I'm gonna go with a more nature vibe we'll do some nature trails it won't go all the way through it'll be more really a recreational type walk behind this side of our town. But I think it's a great opportunity to bring in some more foliage and trees and just protect this side of our town from that train traffic noise as well. Now on this side of town, we don't have any services. Granted, the whole town itself is not very large, but I think we could do some redevelopment here right in front of our tax office, which is acting as like our community town hall, town center, and put in um, police, fire, and medical, um, and maybe a crematorium, just to have those city services right here in the center of town. And we're also really near to the uh, grocery store as well. So I feel like this then kind of creates a town center type feel in this area. Ready to expand our industrial area again. I think this is where we'll probably cap our industry area. And I think along the waterfront here, I would actually like to really do some very dense forests, a lot of rocks, and just kind of make this a very kind of overgrown area behind our industry zone. I think that would look really cool. Okay, I think we're ready to build out again. I just want to touch the water down here. I'm not extending the town more than this, just in between um, the lakefront and the back side of this area slightly. And then what I want to do is build a really nice kind of nature focused, very casual waterfront park. Nothing fancy, just very focused on the recreational aspect versus getting to point A and point B. Um, and then no matter where you live in this town, you've got great access within a block or two to a great walking trail where you could take the dog or hit, hit a jog or hit a run. I think having that accessible just really helps with the overall quality of life when you have some sort of green space nearby. And maybe you don't want to use it for recreation. Maybe you just want to go sit on a bench and enjoy the waterfront. And I think wherever you can provide your citizens with more of this pedestrian type recreational activity it just ups the value of your town and i know the game doesn't really work that way but i like to think of building places for people so this is really important to me the other thing i'm doing is i'm connecting in our bike network and pulling it all the way down so you could ride your bike along the waterfront um, which i think would be a really nice bonus if you lived in this area as well And we are going to do our same trick. We are going to pull our park space 
all along this kind of nature area we put along the backside and this waterfront park. Look at everyone being so happy from the park space. We're extending our overall, overall park system of this town to the waterfront, which will allow us to put um, some fun little docks and things along the lakeside, which I think is just gonna be a really nice touch to kind of a nature focused lake walk. Now down on this side of town, I want to add in a dog park. And then right here in this area, I really want to focus some park type amenities like the restrooms, maybe a cafe, gazebo, a playground, just so this would be a place where there would be some park amenities. And then the rest of the park will just kind of be more of a nature uh, lakefront walk. And we're just gonna grab a viewing deck to complete this side of our little lakefront nature walk. I think that's just a nice way to end that. Okay, looks like we're gonna have our first traffic fix. So let's see what's going on here. There's a little bit of a backup. It's not too bad, but let's make sure that we don't have pedestrians crossing here or here. They don't need to because they can cross further down where the pedestrian roads. Let's make sure we have the go through so the cars aren't stopping there. So we definitely don't want cars stopping on the train tracks for any reason. That's the game mechanic though. I don't think we can do anything about that. Um, I do think we could benefit from some asymmetrical lanes and if you are riding your bike, you can hop off and walk your bike over the tracks and then catch the, um, the bike paths that we have here. So I think it would be okay in this case to break our bike network and add in a few more lanes. So I think that will definitely help in facilitating moving traffic around. So let's get those in and also maybe a little giveaway as well. Okay, we've got our asymmetrical lanes in. I think a little bit of giveaway just to give this road priority will help. And you can see the traffic is already clearing up. So in some cases, just a little extra lanes, a little giveaway and you go through can really help um, facilitate um, traffic. Uh, movement. So I think that is a problem solved for now. That may become a larger problem <laughs> later. <laughs> I think behind here we can just do some more rocks and trees and just kind of pull through that nature vibe behind these buildings. And then I'm going to leave this area blank because at some point we may want to pull a road through and access um, the land on the other side of the lake. So we'll leave that open for now and just um, leave it open for possibilities in the future. Okay, let's do a look in on our buses. Oh wow, this stop here. Okay, well that's not surprising. Um, that's like a midpoint of town. We're right on our bicycle and pedestrian um, path there. But people are, this 30 capacity just isn't gonna cut it. I think we move up to the 50 capacity and we do nine buses on each side. And I think that's gonna be a lot better. Let's 
let's just hang here at this stop and make sure that this is going to work in getting everyone cleared out. Okay, I think this is working really well. One little thing that I wanted to add, we have our bus stop right here. We've got the park and the cafe. I do feel like we could add in a little bit of parking here um, at the kind of popular spot of our park, just to encourage people to come down and enjoy the park. Of course, we want people walking, taking the bus and biking, but you know some people to drive so I think this is a great place to incorporate a little bit of parking and these cute little durable parking lots are one of the very few assets I have selected so far for this build and they're from Larry Skylines you will find a link to my mods and asset list in the description below if you're curious along with everything for the map that we're using I want to just shout out again to David. Thank you for making this suggestion. This does feel more like a town. We didn't quite reach the 8,000 population I wanted to, but we're pretty close. And I feel like given some time, maybe some time spent detailing, we will reach that population. Um, I really do like how this whole town came out. We've got lots of opportunities for different connections to pull through through different areas of the map still. Now we do have this peninsula and I think it might be nice in the next episode to go ahead and do something with that. So maybe I'll put up um, a poll on the channel for um, what we should do with that peninsula area, but feel free to drop your suggestions down below because I am a person who likes completion and I do think Kind of you know filling out this area maybe with like a nature reserve i don't know if we really need to add in a ton more zoning um but yeah let me know what suggestions you guys have and then maybe we'll vote um over the weekend in a poll on the community tab i want to thank you guys for all the feedback from the first episode i am so excited for this series i think it's going to be a long running series because there are so many content creator packs and dlcs and i really want to do a town for each so i think we'll be here a while and i'm going to be putting these noob towns out every single thursday i hope you all have a joyful day and i'll catch you next time